All right, welcome back to the shop. So this video is on ITV64. Um, I, this one's actually been done for about two months. I'm still waiting for the owner to pick it up. Um, I videoed everything on it. I videoed some of it as I was working on it, and then I videoed everything, and I lost a bunch of the video. So I have to reshoot kind of this intro, some of the stuff in the engine compartment, inside the cab, and, and the ending. So anyways, here it goes. Um, so this one was a real pain in the butt. So here's my punch list. Normally, my punch list is about half of that. This thing was just a pain. Everything I did, and I talk about it farther in the video, everything I... I'd fix something and I'd find two, three more things wrong with it. I just fought this thing and fought this thing. So it's finally done. Well, it's been done for a while, but it, I finally got done with it. Uh, she's a pretty good growler. She's in good shape. Uh, it's heading off to Texas and it's going to do good for them. I believe that they're, uh, people have a ranch or a farm or something back over there. And that's what they're going to use it for. All right. So like I said just a minute ago, it's going to be a little bit out of order than my normal videos. Just because I lost the footage and I'm just going to refilm the footage that I need to, that I need for it. Um, so let's start here in the uh, engine compartment. Um, you know, obviously we changed all the filters. We always do that. We change the engine oil, engine oil filters, fuel filter, hydraulic filter. Um, I had to, we, we changed the front steering on this, which was a good, good that he did do that. Um, because his front steering unit was actually broken. And so it's been replaced now with the updated um, suite manufacturing unit. And we also added the missing rear steer unit. So we had to bleed the uh, steering system out and got all that stuff done. Um, hood rubbers, I put new hood rubbers on here. Adjusted the hood, the tension on the hood. Brake proportion valve was bad. So these get shellacked up really bad from the, from the dot five. Um, it's good, great brake fluid. It cannot absorb water. So that's why they, the military uses it. Uh, but when it sits too long, it sits for a long time, it'll shellack up the, some of the components. And this proportioning valve is the first thing that kind of gets screwed up. So you have no rear brakes. So if you don't have rear brakes on your growler, that's what your problem is. It's from the proportion unit. Um, if you just jack it up, or you know, I put it on the lift, I'll put it in gear. I could hold the brakes, put it in gear, and the rear wheels will just spin. They won't stop um, with the foot brakes. So I have to use a parking brake to uh, to stop them so I can put the transmission back in the park, you know, that or shut it off and wait for them to quit spinning. But anyway, so we changed the brake proportion valve, uh, changed the fan belt. Uh, the dipstick was jacked up. The seal part of it, the rubber was just torn up really bad. So put a new dipstick in it. Um, you know, obviously we inspect everything here. We make sure everything's right. I've cleaned the air filter, took it out, cleaned it. The K&N filter, re-oiled it. And then let's... Okay, and then uh, I changed both both of the convex mirrors and I actually painted them on this one. In the past, I haven't been painting them. Um, I finally did on this one and it kind of sucks because I popped the rubber out, popped the glass out, paint it. And while I was doing it, I broke two of them when I broke the glass. And these things are expensive now. I think I'm getting them for like about 20, 25 bucks a piece now. Like they're getting expensive. Um, changed the rear view mirror, or you know, the square mirror here. And these are getting real hard to find. Uh, Grote quit making them. And I think I bought up pretty much all that are out there. And they're, they're getting it to like 45 bucks or something like that. But anyways, I painted that and put that on. Uh, we come to the cab. Um, he didn't want a key switch, but this switch was messed up. The handle here was upside down and the switch housing was just loose. So I tightened all that up, centered it where it belongs so everything lines up. Uh, the weight light here for the glow plugs, I had to put in the light, not light, light on that because it was just it was just missing. Uh, did the, uh, made the rear console cover here, took off the uh, radio mount and uh, you know, for the comm mounts and I put, uh, put made a flat plate for that. The rear steer controller was just hanging out here. It was just hanging by the wires. Um, somebody, I don't know why they took it out, whatever, but it was it was here, but it was just out of place. Put that back in place, uh, put new screws in it. And these stainless steel allens were missing, so I fixed that. Um, this cable for the lock, this comes up and you know locks you the steering wheel. It was pulled out and it was all screwed up. What it is is there's a bracket here and then there's a plastic, like a nylon, like the nylon air hose stuff. Um, they use it as a sheath and it, it go, crimps into the end here and it goes back and just lays back in here. And the cable had been pulled out and jerked around and it broke that off. So I, I fixed that sheath, uh, put the cable back in, got that working. Still working on some seat cushions for them. I don't know where to get these rear backs seat cushions. Um, I've located some bottoms. I'm just waiting for them. Uh, they got lost in transit, so we're hoping to find those. All right, that's pretty much it inside the cabin. Um, well, I did, I did drain. I cut drill. I went to drill drain holes in here in the uh, the dimmer switch, 
and it was already rusted out pretty bad. The drill bit just went straight through it. It was rusted out real bad. But we have the drain holes there now, so it's not gonna, you know, get any worse, I hope. You can see a little bit of rust here. This is the bracket for the one of the pans underneath, and just from it flexing from getting, you know, hitting stuff, uh, it's chipped the paint off and it's rusting up a little bit. You see a little bit of rust right here, and that's the same rust from that dimmer switch. Uh, that's why it's important to drill those drain holes in your dimmer switch. Um, you know, if you're going to get around water, I'd do it anyways, just to make sure that it doesn't uh, just accumulate water, you know, when it rains or something like that, or just from humidity in the air. Uh, so, you know, we obviously put the, the air tank drains. We add the one for the front tank. Uh, we put, you know, air tank drain in the back, just, you know, cable pull one. All right, so underneath here, you can see we changed the CV boots on both front axles. Uh, we changed the upgraded to the, to the new style steering unit on here, the sweet unit. We took the Appleton off and put the new sweet unit on. Uh, we replaced the uh, boots on the upper ball joints on three of the ball joints, both the front ones and one of the rear. Uh, changed the lower control arm bushings on both control arms on the front. I uh, changed the front airbags. Uh, coming here to the drive shaft, uh, I had to have the front drive shaft rebuilt. The other one was just totaled. Um, or actually, the front was bent a little bit, that's right. The rear one was totaled. It was really bad. Um, so it was totally retubed, rebuilt. Um, I put new crosses in both ends of both of them um, so that they'll be good to go for a long time. Change the transfer case fluid. Uh, let's come around here to the back here. So when I was first diagnosing this thing, it had a ton of problems with the um, suspension where it wouldn't come up level. It was just doing all kinds of weird stuff. And one of the issues was this was broken, one of the brackets for the uh, um, anti-sway bar. And that's where the control, you know, the sensor is for the airbags for this, for this, so, you know, for the wheels. And so this was hanging down or pushed up. I forget, it was way out of place. So this thing couldn't adjust and it, it didn't know where, where it was. So it was just dropping this corner all the way down. So replace those. Um, and then the suspension system had a lot of other issues. Um, I'll talk about those when I come around to that part of the truck. Uh, the rear CV boots were good. Um, these ones are actually very fresh. The other ones are pretty fresh. They're gonna last quite a long time. I'm not worried about them. Um, fixed an air leak back here. It was just this fitting was loose. Um, so I sealed that back up, got that working again. The rear airbags are in good shape, so there's no sense of changing those. Uh, we installed a rear steer unit. Uh, bought this from uh, my friend Chris over on the East Coast. Uh, he shipped it out, and it's a brand new unit. Uh, so this thing's going to have rear steer, well, has rear steering again. And um, I line the wheels as good as I can. I'm not a alignment guy. I don't pretend to be, don't want to be. Um, but I did the best that I could lining them up, and I think I have them pretty close. Yeah, maybe not. This one looks like it's pointed that way a little bit. Maybe I'll, I'll adjust that a little bit more. This one looks pretty good, but yeah, I'll have to do that. That's one more thing to, to add on. Uh, change the diff fluid uh, in both diffs. They had different oil front and rear, and the front diff, actually, when I had the CV axle out, I noticed that the bearing was broken inside here, so I replaced the bearing and obviously the seals. This had really new fresh oil in there. It looked like really nice oil. Um, probably a synthetic oil. And the rear looked like just some cheap gen generic whatever 90 weight or something like that. So they both have 85 140 in them again. They don't have synthetic. I know some guys on the forum are talking about that these Explorer diffs aren't supposed to have synthetic. But the covers on them, it's bolted in the cover. It says synthetic, 85 140. Um, but you don't have to have synthetic. Synthetic just lasts longer. Um, it's not that it's a better oil or a different oil. It's different, but it just lasts longer. That's why you pay more for it. So it's got standard 85140 in it. Um, let me come back around here. The exhaust was all tight. Everything was good on the exhaust. All right, so in the back here, I'm filming this before the rest of the video just because I have the tin work off. I'll put all that back on um, in a little bit here. Um, so I had, a, I had a change of battery cables on here. It had some really bad, cheap, auto parts store one you know where it has two bolts that clamp on there those things always fail they always grow it up and that one was in really bad shape anyways i pulled a cable right out of it so i happen to have one of the original um parts for it you know it was new that um, i bought from somebody and so it's some of these i've been making up but this one actually had the i had the one so i put it on so it's the original one or you know the oem replacement um 
and the other end goes right up to here to this breaker. And I also put a battery disconnect switch on here, just you know, in case he has parked for uh, you know days on end, it won't kill the battery. Um, down here, um, when I was talking about earlier about the suspension issues, um, these solenoid valves were giving me all kinds of problems. First off, I had a lot of leaks in here. You can see all the red hose, this hose I changed. Um, there's fittings I changed. Uh, this here, for some reason, they hooked the air compressor outlet on this side. So this was over here, and then it was so tight over here because of this stainless steel nylon hose. And uh, when we checked out, that it was pushing, it was kinking that, the, the hose, the tube here. It was smashed up against here, rubbing on everything. So I moved it back to where it goes. I put a 45 degree fitting here. I had to put a new check valve because the check valve was bad. Um, so I got that straightened out. Got all this stuff straightened out. This solenoid valve was bad to, to send air to the rear steering unit to release the uh, locks. And it was bad, so it wasn't working. Change that. Um, back over here, this relay was, was broken, rotted out. So that's why the compressor didn't work and a bunch of other stuff didn't work. So I changed that. Um, I, I waited an extra week to get these better ones. I found a good deal on these things here. Um, they're just a way better breaker than these pieces of junk. Uh, so I changed that, got that done. And then I was troubleshooting the uh, suspension system and two of the wheels wouldn't go down. They'd go up, but they wouldn't go down. You could hear the relay clicking. So I went through and I pulled the valves out. I'm checking the valves, everything's shuttling good. I oiled it up with some mystery oil, still wouldn't work. So look at this picture here. I'll insert a picture here and show you. Look inside the exhaust port and you can see there was some kind of a bug that makes a nest or something out of mud. And on the exhaust port on this one and the exhaust port on this one, well there's two exhaust ports on each one on the 1161. And on the exhaust port on this side and the exhaust port on this side, uh, something made a mud nest in there and so it wouldn't let the air out. And it's not enough pressure to blow it out. So I had to pull the manifolds up and I had to dig the stuff out and flush it all out. And then I got all that working. I set the zip tie these wires back into place. I had to cut all the zip ties because I had a lot going on in here, pulling these valves out. And that was half a day right there, just going through all that stuff. Uh, put a new filter on the compressor. This one actually had a filter. <laughs> Usually we don't even see them or we just see remnants, but it was decaying pretty bad. So, you know, always put a new filter on there. That's about it back here. Uh, it came with new batteries. The owner put new batteries in it. Um, so that was good. All right, so that's about it. Um, this video is a little choppy. It's a little different than I usually do. Um, and you know, basically, I know, I know some people might get bored just seeing the same videos on these things all the time, what we've done to them. But I, I really just do them for a historical um, reference so that this vehicle in 20 years, if somebody buys it, they can search on the internet. If they find this video on the internet, they'll be able to see what this thing looked like when it came from the Marines, uh, what, what the first owner had to do to it to get it into working order, just what it looked like. Um, I mean, it's look at that Mighty Might sitting over there, that 61 Mighty Might. There's no way I'm going to find video or find any records on that thing. This one here, I don't know what the Marines did, but they only put a thousand miles on the thing. Um, from then on out, it starts off with video reference, and so that's why I do these. And um, so anyways, I thank you guys for watching. I thank you for the comments. Um, hit the like button, please. That, that helps a lot. And share the video if you have any friends that are interested in this stuff. And thanks for watching. And one thing with this is just a pain in the butt. This truck has been a pain in the butt. It, every time I'd fix one thing, I'd find two or three more things to fix. I've just been slaving over this thing. And every time I need parts, if I don't have it here, it's like a week, two weeks, two and a half weeks to get parts. Um, this whole supply chain bullcrap <laughs> needs to end. Uh, but one thing about it, I see these spider webs. Everywhere you go, at first it had black widows all over it. Everywhere I'd reach, I'd reach into it and find a black widow. But they laid their eggs and died. So now there's still tons of spider webs on it. And there's spider, black widow egg packets everywhere. Little spikely, spiky looking egg things. Um, it's going to need to be sprayed down really good. I didn't do it, but hopefully it's going to be out of my shop pretty soon. Because I am actually tired of work on this one. <laughs> I've got to get it back to the owner. I know he's anxious for it. And um, I think I'm done. So I just have to, I just finished putting the pans on. I just, you know, I finished changing the oils. I just finished putting the pans on. I don't have a rear pan for it. I didn't have one. I just have to change the engine oil filter, fill that up, put the rear deck lids on, and this thing's done. And I can get it out of here and get it back to the owner. Um, it's it's kind of rough. It's not that bad. But it's I've seen I've seen better definitely. Um, it's going to run good for him. That that's you know, and I fixed everything. That's all the systems work now. All the stuff is done and ready to go on it. Um, it's got some rust issues and stuff like that. But 
Um, it's going to be a decent growler, but I don't like it. It's not hasn't been my friend. <laughs> it's been my friend at all. 